Today I'm going to be talking about this lens, the Voigtlander 35-2 APO. I've owned it for about 10 months and I've put, I don't know, a dozen-ish rolls of film through it, so nothing crazy, but enough to get a good feel for it. I've also shot it adapted on my X-T4 and my Fuji GFX camera, so I can offer some few examples from those two formats as well. And as with my other reviews, this won't be a technical review, but I will offer some brief sharpness examples. And I would say if you want a technical review, Google it. There are a few of them out there. The one sentence spoiler version of this lens is that it's optically near perfect and ergonomically challenged. Maybe I'm nitpicking because if I could find anything optically wrong with it, I would probably mention that. But the viewfinder blockage in particular is a bit of a pain. So some quick info on the lens. Voigtlander started offering it early last year and it's an M-mount lens. You can easily adapt it to pretty much any crop sensor and it'll of course have full coverage and in my experience works great. By Leica standards it's relatively long, heavy, and there's a fair bit of viewfinder blockage. The hood on mine is not standard, it's the Hauge hood. It's designed for the Zeiss 35 1.4M lens. Some pluses of the lens. It's optically pretty much perfect, so there's nothing to complain about there. Extremely sharp, even wide open. I do think it improves a little bit, stopping down to 2.8, but only when I do digital tests on film, you would be very hard pressed to find any difference. This lens doesn't feel super digital in its rendering. I feel like it renders a bit warm, and maybe here's some pocket science for you because of the lack of the any fringing, I don't know, the images feel very natural and sort of filmic even when I shoot it adapted. The build is very solid, I think all the Voigtlander lenses are all metal sort of vintage style build. And the focus ring feels solid, maybe a little bit too firm. The aperture ring feels pretty perfect, it's very hard to knock it accidentally, unlike some Leica lenses. So adapted on the Fuji X-Mount, I'm using the official Fuji adapter, so best possible adaptation quality you can get, and it's very good adapted, something like a 50, however I will say, especially the corners aren't quite perfect, wide open, I think it's just an issue with adapting the lens, but in the examples I'll show you, you'll see by the time you stop down to like f4, f5.6, it's very much as sharp as Fuji's just released 2021 series primes. The big minus of the lens, it blocks a very non-trivial corner of your viewfinder, and so framing becomes a bit of a pain, you kind of have to guess. There's no focus tab, I think that this is the norm with non-Leica lenses, but I love on Leica lenses, you just stick your finger in the little focus tab and you can focus ultra quickly. With the traditional lens where you have to grab it with two fingers, it just never feels quite as nice. I did also buy this aftermarket focus tab that's adhesived onto here, but since it's like this rubbery plasticky material it doesn't feel as good as an integrated uh, metal focus tab couple really nitty dumb complaints um one it doesn't cover medium format mini medium format of the fuji gfx that's the case for every m lens i've owned but just in case you wanted to do that weird adaptation know that you will have to crop in a little bit and it's not a like a lens so if you want cool points for shooting in an overpriced like a lens it won't get you those 
And in my opinion, it isn't quite as pretty as an on-brand Leica lens, but if you're spending one eighth as much, probably you can't complain. Finally, let's do a couple quick comparisons. I personally love the 35mm focal length. It's probably my favorite. So first up, the Zeiss 35 2.8C. Awesome lens was one of the most used lenses for me for years, and it still holds up. That lens is sharper than Leica's old 2.0 A-Sphere. On film, honestly, I don't think you will find literally any difference between the Zeiss 2.8 and the Voigtlander. So if you need a perfect f2, go for the newer Voigtlander. If you are okay with 2.8 and you want the small size and weight, get the Zeiss. The Zeiss will also probably save you 500 or so dollars, which doesn't hurt. I briefly owned the Zeiss 35 II Biogon and found that lens to be fine but not exceptional. Unlike the 2.8, it's not as ridiculously bitingly contrasty and characterful and it's also less sharp and also bigger and blocks the viewfinder. So no offense to you if you own it, but if you want an, a step up in image quality, I would grab the newer Voigtlander. I'll also talk briefly about a ridiculous comparison, which is this 35 to the Leica 50 APO. So I happen to own one of these because I used to have a digital Leica that I since sold, and I just like the lens too much to sell it. When I compare them adapted on my X-T4, I don't notice any sharpness difference between the two. And when I've read online of other people comparing the Voigtlander 35 to the new Leica 35 APO, they seem to say that there's no appreciable difference one way or the other. They're basically both perfect. Also for the Leica lens, definitely prefer the ergonomics of the Leica lens. My complaint about the aperture ring on that one is it's way too easy to accidentally knock. But if you ignore that, the focusing experience on that lens is just incredible. It has this perfectly smooth, damped feel to it. Uh, very hard to put into words, but if you've used certain Leica lenses, you know how nice it feels to focus on them. So of course there are also a bunch of other Voigtlander 35mm lenses. From my research, it doesn't seem like any of them are on par for sharpness, but maybe if you're shooting stop down or you're shooting film, that sharpness difference doesn't matter. Or maybe you want a more vintage look, in which case don't let me badger you into buying a modern lens. Buy a vintage lens or a vintage styled modern lens. So yeah, that's about it. Um, would highly recommend this lens if you want a beautifully rendering, non-digital, but incredibly sharp and optically perfect at the same time lens. The ergonomics aren't perfect, the viewfinder blockage is annoying, but I think you can live with those. And the price, while not cheap, is okay considering just how good it is. That's about it. Um, I post videos roughly once a month, typically squeaking in right at the wire at the end of the month to keep myself honest. Feel free to ask any questions, offer helpful suggestions, or just say hi below. Everything in these videos is under Creative Commons, so feel free to reuse them. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, maybe learned something, and uh, I will see you next month. Mm -hmm.